<clears throat> so welcome then, or Croeso, as we say in Wales from time to time, um, says a Yorkshireman. Um, just some basic housekeeping rules before we begin. If you wouldn't mind, I think most of you have already done it, but could you just mute yourselves, please, so we don't get background noise and so on? We've got a fairly large audience, and I'm delighted to say that it's not just the Welsh audience. We've got people from across the UK, so welcome to everybody coming from England and India and wherever you're from. We've also got people that are not just from the co-op. Um, we've got people from um, some external organisations as well, not just people like Aileen, perhaps, that you would expect to be here from Fair Trade Wales, uh, but people from the Leonard uh, Cheshire Homes and um, somebody from a cleaning company. It, so this event has attracted, you know, quite a lot of attention, really, which is brilliant. Throughout the course of the morning, what I'd like you to do, if you wouldn't mind, is use the chat box, and Ailsa will be um, monitoring the chat box throughout. We have got a question session after Father John's piece um, a little bit later through this presentation. So you will get a chance to ask questions then, or else we'll pick up the questions and pose your questions on your behalf. As I said earlier, this session is being recorded because I'd like to share it with colleagues um, so that more people get to see it. And also um, we'd like to do some shares on social media as well. Um, just showing the fantastic work that Father John does over in India. So as I said earlier, if you don't want to be seen on screen, turn your video off, please. As you will have seen already, um, it's appropriate that we've got a priest with us today uh, because I have a confession to make um, and I'm going to ask for your forgiveness in advance. The confession, if you've not already guessed, is that I'm a novice on Teams. So. The transition from slides to videos and so on, and I've got three videos to show, might not be as slick as I would like it to be, but I'm going to do my best, and I hope that the gaps in between aren't too large. Um, we've got an action-packed program today. <clears throat> um, I'm afraid you've got to listen to my droning voice. I'm Graham Craven, the Member Pioneer Coordinator for Cardiff, the Vale and Lower Valleys. Um, we've obviously got Father John, who some of you will have seen on screen, um, and I'm going to introduce Father John properly in a few minutes. We've also got Catherine Showell, who's a member pioneer from the Cardiff team, who's going to take us on a fair trade world tour from the comfort of her own home, or rather from a video that she filmed in store a week or two ago. We've also got Peter Cox, another member pioneer in Cardiff, who's going to lead the questioning of um, Father John later. He's going to lead that conversation, if you like, so that we can pick up on your questions and get Father John to explain what he does in, in some detail, so you won't miss out on that. And then finally, we've got Aileen Burmeister from Fairtrade Wales, who's going to help some things up at the end by questioning really what we can all do to promote fair trade and generate more interest, particularly from um, younger people. Um, as I said earlier, we've got some short presentations to make. Um, we've got the meaning of fair trade uh, for the Cooperative Act. That introduction comes from Joe Whitfield, who is the CEO of Food Within the Co-op. As I said, uh, Catherine is going to be taking us on that fair trade world tour. And then um, Father John will be speaking, and then there's a chance for discussion and questions towards the end of the session. So if that's okay. Thank you. First bit is done. Um, and to share the window. Sorry, bear with me a second. Here we go. Now, I'm hoping to be able to play you a, the video, the welcome from Joe Whitfield. So again, just please bear with me a second. Okay, so this is the, the, the introductory video from Joe Whitfield, CEO for food um, from Co-op. 
and there's a guest speaker at the end. Hi everyone, thank you for joining us in celebrating Fair Trade Fortnight. Co-op has been pioneering fair trade for over 25 years and Fair Trade Fortnight is an annual campaign for fair trade supporters like the Co-op to really shout about the difference that fair trade makes both to people and the planet. People are naturally at the heart of what we do and over the last 12 months uh, we've been particularly thinking about the crisis and the impact it's been having on producers. So I wrote to our key producers really to thank them for ensuring that people across the world were still able to be supplied with products during the pandemic and to really offer our continued support. The messages we've received back have made me so proud of Co-op's commitment to fair trade and it really does spare us on. Producers around the world are facing some of the hardest times um, with markets disrupted, customers moving away from fair trade products and also the impact that climate change is having on their crops. And fair trade is the only certification that puts workers first, it pays producers fairly, it gives them a say in their future and it really helps strengthen communities all around the world. Which is why uh, to further support the global fair trade community, in July last year, Co-op launched our own Global Wellbeing Charter, which really pledges our commitment to keep supporting fair trade producers and workers. Now, like everything in the past 12 months, we're going to be celebrating Fair Trade Fortnight a little bit differently. So my ask of you is to spread the word, continue to champion the difference we make every time that we choose Fair Trade. You're going to find some fantastic promotions, some new Fair Trade products and some really great events in store throughout the whole celebration. So thank you very much for your support and happy Fair Trade Fortnight. Hello again to our friend at Fair Trade UK. It's a pleasure. I'm always delighted to connect with you. I'm here in Abidjan talking to you and by the God, by the grace of God, we are all doing well. The team in the office and the producers on the ground, we are fine. We have learned uh, to adapt ourselves to the pandemic. We now know how to take care of ourselves the, in the community. So thank you for thinking about us. Thank you for everything you have done so far. Yes, we are still on the ground, we are still pushing, we are still working hard to make sure that uh, our farmers and their families understand how important it is for us to take care of the nature, take care of our environment, take care of women, kids, youth, and uh, the producers themselves. Uh, we are seeing more and more women uh, choosing the cook stove instead of the firewood. They will not need to go to the farm to, to, to at least carry this heavy load and of course they are not damaging uh, what is on, on the nature so for us it's something good you will see producers investing on uh, uh, shut trees they are also having their nursery to make sure that they have enough enough trees on the farms and this is something good and this is possible because you are buying fair trade you are buying your chocolate your drinks on the fair trade and you are choosing fair trade and you are making a difference, you are doing something different. So your contribution is bringing a premium and this premium is used to ensure that uh, investment, investment are made in the community and in the farm. So thank you very much for shopping Fairtree. Thank you very much for making this difference and thank you for thinking about producers on the south. I wish you a very, very, very festive celebration and looking forward. Why are we having this event? Well, this event itself came about because we, as a team in Cardiff, we were disappointed that we weren't going to get to meet fair trade producers in person this year. Usually somebody comes across and talks to us. So we decided we'd try for the next best thing at the moment, which is a virtual meeting. So thank you for your patience in my um, technical abilities. And as I said earlier, it's fantastic that so many of you have chosen to spend part of your morning with us. You've seen Father John, who's going to be talking to us uh, in a little while, and I will introduce him properly soon. 
But first, um, we're here as part of Fair Trade Foundation's Choose the World You Want Festival. It's a chance to shine a spotlight on the crisis, uh, climate crisis and what it means for the people who produce the things we love to eat and drink. For more than 25 years, farmers and workers have been the fundamental reason why fair trade exists. Too many farmers are still struggling to put food on the table in, in a global trading system that's still balanced in favour of the powerful few. Now, not only are their livelihoods under threat, so too is the food we all love. Take chocolate, for example. West Africa produces more than half the world's cocoa. But as temperatures rise, many of these regions will simply become too hot to grow cocoa or coffee. By 2050, it's estimated that 50% of the land currently used for coffee production will be lost. We can't allow that situation to continue, but while it does, farmers struggling to earn enough can't realistically look beyond their day-to-day -day needs to take action against the growing climate emergency. We all know that the last 12 months has been a year like no other. Every one of us has struggled in some way to adjust to life during the global pandemic. On top of an existing environmental crisis, fair trade is already seeing the impact of COVID-19 in farming communities. As well as the hardships of the last year, we've also seen what can happen when communities come together to fight for change. Millions have been inspired by the Black Lives Matter movement and millions continue to demand climate justice at demonstrations around the world. We need justice for our people and for our planet. Sometimes we can all feel powerless to affect change, but look at the year we've just lived through. Look at what's possible when we work together, even in the darkest of times. We have choices that we can make every day and a powerful choice that we can all make now is in the palm of our hands, and that's to choose fair trade. <clears throat> so why should we buy fair trade and make a difference? As a cooperative, um, the cooperative group rather works with others throughout the world and many of them are fair trade farmers and producers like Father John as we've just seen. Fair trade pays its producers fairly, it ensures that they have control over their future, strengthens their local communities and does the right thing by the people and the planet. And I'm sure that Father John will explain a little bit more about this um, shortly. Hi. Hello, Kenny. Why should why should the co-op sell fair trade produce? Well, it seems like it's a perfect fit, really. Um, selling fair trade isn't just the right thing to do. Its principles marry many cooperative values, those of equality, fair trade benefits communities rather than individuals, equity. It sets a fair price and provides financial security for those farmers. And it provides education. Many of those in the farming community use the fair trade premium to invest in schooling for its young people and probably healthcare as well. And cooperation, obviously, a large proportion of fair trade farmers are members of co ops. <clears throat> now, when I started in the co-op a little over um, 12 months ago, I did my induction in uh, the co-op's head office in Manchester. It's a, a big modern building um, and inside it's full of glass screens. And on just about every glass screen is a decal that shows off um, something that the co-op has been proud of of its achievements since the, it was founded in the 1840s. And I can remember thinking at the time, crikey, it must be a hell of a job for the co-op's new leaders to think how are they going to add their names and their achievements onto those decals. But I think these next three slides show that I think they ought to order some more glass screens. Um, the co-op is... Um, 
sorry, the UK is the biggest fair trade market in the world, and the co-op is the lar largest UK convenience seller of fair trade, accounting for 80% of sales of fair trade in the sector. And the co-op has been championing fair trade for 26 years now, and have been at the forefront of fair trade since 1995. As Joe Whitfield said in 2018, uh, the court launched its future of food ambition, committing to ensure that all our products will be created with respect for people and the planet and made with quality and sustainability at, it, at its heart. Fair trade plays a big part in the plan and illustrates our commitment to the campaign for the future. And now I think this is something that the court can be genuinely proud about. Um, in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, the co-op launched a global wellbeing charter that pledged support for fair trade producers, and it allocated £310,000 in total to provide emergency relief food parcels, essential PPE equipment for health personnel, and quarantine hospitals for people infected to isolate. So you don't hear much about that, but... Um, it's a real achievement and as I say, I think there'll be um, room for that on the glass screens in the Manchester head office. So now I'm going to try again and take you on the world tour with Catherine. Uh, so I'm Catherine, I'm a store colleague um, working in Pont Cana at the minute, but I've worked for co-op in Cardiff for nine years and for the past three months I've been part of the member pioneer team. Um, as a colleague, it's it's kind of great to go to work and be in an environment where you know the co-op is putting people first and we're very involved in fair trade, the local community fund as well. Um, and I'm really glad that we can put on events like this just to talk about it and help people understand the impact that it can have on the communities. Um, so that's why I've got further involved in kind of the member pioneer team. Um, and last week, after the store was closed, of course, due to COVID um, guidelines, um, we, myself and Peter, went into the store and we did this kind of virtual shop around the store just to see what products we could find with the Fair Trade logo and just to highlight some of the co-op products that you can buy. Let's start our around the world trip with Fair Trade in Chile the home of the first fair trade certified wine in the world. So here we come to our selection of red wines. We've got um, a good selection on this shelf here. We just pick up one, so we've got here the uh, fair trade Merlot, which is specially blended for the co-op. Um, if that's not your fancy, then we've also got everything else on the shelf. I put that back and move across to the white wine. In the fridge here we've got another shelf, all co-op branded wines. Um, and if you look at the prices as well, they compete with everything else in the fridge really. Fair trade does not have to be expensive. And of course the best thing about all this co-op wine is tasting it all. From Chile to West Africa, one of the places where they grow the cocoa bean, which of course makes chocolate. And every spoonful is fair trade. So another of our key uh, fair trade products is of course our chocolate. Um, so here we have a good selection of, we've got dark chocolate, chocolate with orange, a bit of raspberries for a bit of more flavor. And these ones are actually vegan as well. So um, that's really important recently, especially after the success of the January. If you have chosen that lifestyle, then we've got vegan chocolate for you. Or if you want something extra special up here, Prosecco truffles, that's my choice. Of course, chocolate is also in some of our favorite products. Um, so here we've got chocolate cake. We've got chocolate eclairs. And we've got caught brownies. So Co-op's made a commitment that all its chocolate in all of its products is fair trade. So it's not always on the packaging, but believe me, 
it's co-op, it's chocolate, it is fair trade. Now, West Africa, across to Kenya, one of the places growing tea for the co-op. Fair trade tea, of course, supporting thousands of tea smallholders and workers in Kenya and Malawi. So you might be surprised to know that we started blending in 1990, back in the beginning of the last century. And for the last 26 years, those teas have been only fair trade. So you've got a good choice here, you've got the gold blend, the caffeinated, or the regular, which is in the red box, and that's one of the nation's most popular teas. Also, if you still like doing your tea in the pot, you actually do your loose leaf tea as well. So there's options for everyone. Fair trade tea growers in Africa and coffee growers in Colombia are facing a new set of challenging times with the climate crisis. Coffee's more your thing. We've got an even bigger selection over here. So here's your coffee beans. We've got Kenyan coffee beans. Or we've got, here we've got the Rwandan packet, which is a light roast. We're moving across, we've got medium roast with Guatemalan and even Colombian and Kenyan coffee. So plenty of choice there. If you prefer it quick and easy, there we go. We've got the instant coffee, which is um, very competitive against all the other brands as well. Still in South America, we go up to Belize where the sugar smallholders have benefited from the fair trade sugar in co-op own brand since 2016. And if you started baking like many of us have during this lockdown, it's worth knowing that all co-op sugar is fair trade. So whether you're using brown sugar for your banana cake or maybe golden pasta sugar for uh, Victoria sponge, co-op is the place to go. You'll only find fair trade bananas in the co-op and it's been that way for 25 years. Now the co-op is investing in additional funds for community projects. So another third of the co-op, we're the first supermarket in the UK to sell fair trade bananas. We sell them in every store. So whenever you come to your local co-op, you know that you're buying fair trade bananas. Back to Kenya. A new addition to co-op fair trade products, roses. Helping the women of Kenya in their own cooperative to achieve their dreams. And how best is to finish this story of fair trade in Cardiff's co-ops? than with some fair trade roses. good so I, I would uh, really like to thank Catherine who I think will be getting the call from Hollywood soon um, and Peter for filming that video in store and as Catherine said it was filmed late at night when the store was closed so we avoided any um, social distancing issues and so on. Um, now um, I'm going to move on to um, introducing Father John and when I've done a general description of Father John and described his experience and so on. I'm going to play just a short video before I hand finally the, the screen over, over to him to tell you about what he does. <clears throat> he very kindly sent me this description. Um, Father John Joseph was order, ordained as a Catholic priest in 1997. Later, while working in a remote tribal village, he took a law degree and started to input le uh, impart legal literacy to the tribal and marginalised people in Karnataka, I hope I pronounced that right, and Kerala. 
in 2007, he was appointed as director of the Wayanad Social Services Society. He's currently chairman of the Wayanad Social Services Society Organic Farmers Fair Trade Association. He's chairman of Bioin Agro Research and he's legal advisor to the Kerala Agro Foundation for Fair Trade Enhancement. He's all that and he's still found time to come and talk to us this morning. So thank you very much. Um, as I say, you'll have to bear with me again now while I see if I can play this third and final video for me. So please, your patience once more. I am uh, Father John, uh, coming from India. Our area, that's Vayana district, uh, that is a remote area where farm, the farming is the major source of income. I'm the chairman of a cooperative society called WSSS, Organic Farmers Fair Trade Association. And we started with the 400 farmers. And gradually that is developed and the number is increased up to uh, 8,000. And our farmers are mo mostly engaged in coffee cultivation as well as uh, spice cultivation. So Fair Trade is really supporting us to uh, market our products in a better price and the fair trade brings better life to the people in the farming area. So we are supporting the poor children in order to uh, find out their fees for the schooling or else we are supporting the people who are uh, affected with uh, deadly diseases like a cancer which is a byproduct of the uh, chemical farming, excessive like use of pesticides and so on. Always we can say that uh, our premium or the cost, it is all, always it is a better better price. But at the same time, this price is not matching with the effort of the farmers. Uh, when we get a better price for the commodity, for the for the agricultural products, then uh, the people will generation generation will be attracted to uh, do the agriculture. Otherwise. Uh, in the future, uh, there shall not be much people. When you are uh, drinking a cup of coffee, or uh, uh, taking a banana, or even other food crops uh, with the label of fair trade, uh, you are supporting a family which is far distance, but who are deserving. I hope that was all clear. Everybody saw and heard that. Yeah, great stuff. And now it's over to uh, uh, Father John and Peter for a discussion, really. Uh, welcome, Father John. Uh, do you want to start um, saying a few words? Yes, yeah, uh, my pleasure to be with you in this morning. Uh, though we are in a different continent, so we can join together with a noble cause that is fair trade. And actually, we know that after uh, 2018 onwards, the farmers in Kerala are suffering a lot, mainly because of the climate change. Two times we have heavy flood, you might have heard uh, through the BBC and so on. And this year, fortunately, the whole world is affected by COVID-19. And lockdown that affected the daily bread runners. They cannot go for even uh, go out for uh, taking or doing work. In that scenario, we, a cooperative with a social responsibility, we could support the farmers as well as the poor and needy people by utilizing the premium. We supported the poor, especially the tribal communities and so on, who are in the, in the remote area by giving or uh, feeding them by food kits, essential commodities are there in the kit. So that helped the farmers very much to uh, overcome the threat of COVID in certain extent. Actually that happened only because of the fair trade. And now uh, the coffee rate is, especially for the raw coffee, rate is very, very low. For the last three years, this is the lowest price. But even then, fair trade as well as organic coffee uh, the farmers who are registered with the fair trade got a better premium, better price. And of course, uh, the fair trade ginger, the fair trade turmeric, as well as fair trade spices, other spices, also give a better price to the farmers, which helped them to 
uh, meet the or address this uh, crucial issue. So, uh, in fact, this is happening because a community is there to support the poor farmers. A community is ready to share their uh, means with the poor people. So, we are well aware of about the uh, need and existence of fair trade. And I hope that you people are also there to support the farming community, especially the marginalized farmers in the remote area. And why not is around 18% of people are from tribal community. And it is a place where there is no railway and no airport and nothing else. Only road transport is there because it's a guard area. So this is the situation. So here, uh, around 99% per, uh, percentage of people are agricultural uh, on people. They are mostly doing agriculture. And again, around 17% of the area are forest area. So there is always tension between wild animal and the uh, farmers. Uh, the uh, people, the, none of other than coffee, none other other crops are not are not possible here because of wild boar and then elephants and so on. Recently, we are facing tiger attacks also. Even the farmers who are working in the field in the coffee area, they are facing this threat. And then another another issue is the excessive number of monkeys that are here. So the life of farming community is really a threat. And the rules that are imposed or introduced are not in favor of the farming community. Again, another threat is the uh, eco-sensitive zone that is declared recently by the government of India, uh, considering or declaring uh, this Western Ghat as a heritage area. And government as well as the environmental protective activists are getting money, but that money is not shared with the farming community. Actually, they are the real witness. So here, the fair trade, somehow that can support the farmers by giving a better premium price and can support them to get uh, agricultural means like uh, manure and other things. Then we are supporting their children up to certain extent to for their schooling fees and so on. So these are the these are happening really because of the broad-minded people all over there under under one umbrella that is created. So thank you very much. Father Grant, lo lovely to see you again after two years. Um, I should expect to tell everyone else that um, the last time we met was in the best Carolyn restaurant in Wales. Um, the Purple Poppadom, and if you haven't been there yet, uh, I give them a free advert. Um, you've not said the most important thing uh, about where you come from, which is that Carolyn's claim that it's God's own country. So I think you probably want a double claim to that, don't you? <laughs> um, I've now been there three times, um, and when you were describing uh, Wayne and I, I was remembering a hair raising journey in a car up from uh, Kochi. It, it is uh, remote. And one of the things that surprised me, I, I, I didn't know about tea and coffee production, is that it's a 24 hour process and that tea in particular can't be stopped. Um, you have to pick tea every day of the year and the workers have to work every day. So how have you managed that with the COVID crisis? So during the COVID season, there is no harvest because lockdown declared, no one is permitted to go out. So that was the thing. And that was the farmers or, or the daily workers suffered a lot during the uh, COVID lockdown season. But it extend uh, one and a half or two, 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 three months and afterwards. And during that time, government introduced a lot of supportive measures like food kit distributions and so on. And along with government, uh, we, the fair trade community here, also supported our, our people, our farmers, as well as the daily, runners, uh, daily bread runners. 
So in such, uh, and of course, the uh, coffee leaf, uh, sorry, uh, tea leaf that is that ought to be collected every day. That's ruined out. The, uh, after three or four months, people have to do a pruning. And that pruning and uh, is permitted to grow the new leaves and collecting that one. So for three months or two months, there is no work is permitted. Yes. So um, uh, presumably there was a, a, a production problem of, of meeting the needs of suppliers as well. So no money coming in from suppliers for uh, uh, no tea, no coffee, no spices. Yeah, coffee and spices, most of the spices are seasonal crops. So it, it doesn't affect it much. But daily, okay. daily, daily uh, harvesting are like uh, milking cows, then tea, such things affected badly because of this COVID pandemic. I'd like to take you back to the beginning. How difficult was it to form a cooperative especially of so many suppliers. I know that Kerala is described as one of the, as possibly the most politically aware part of India. There's a very uh, socially aware population. So how, how difficult is it to, to work cooperatively? Actually, Kerala people are much ever aware about their rights. That's a major thing. So it's easy to introduce a new system to them. And again, uh, around 99 people, percentage of people are literate or uh, they are educated. They are school going and most of them are graduates also. So when we are introducing a system, they can read the pamphlets, they can read the bylaw, they can discuss it. So a system is there and people are are not blindly following. Instead, they will question, they will try to understand, and they will stand for their right. So when fair trade is introduced, they are free to talk with the auditors. They are free to ask questions. They are free to ask the rate, current rate, that fair trade is offering, and they will match it. So a community that is well aware about their right, it's easy for them to grow up. That's my point. How are you preparing for the the change in climate um, for the tea and coffee and spice growers? Change climate is, is beyond our control. So how nothing but to move along with that one. Uh, but uh, the attack from the wild animals and so on, that somehow we can, we can if the, the if law or rule is, are uh, supporting. Change of climate mostly, you know, that the, the uh, flowering time is changing. Then uh, when we are getting uh, rain in the, during the harvest season or in the, you know, in the uh, harvest and as, afterwards the drying season, that will affect the quality of the material. So uh, farmers, somehow they are, this, this year also, when coffee is spread for drying, uh, heavy rains are there. So that, in, in, in fact, that affects the poor farmers. So it's beyond our control. But I think, I think that the international community should have to address this kind of issues. It means by uh, improving or uh, by reconsidering the cost of production and so on, and as, especially the loss that the farmers are suffering and so on, should be, should be considered. But unfortunately, this year the worst coffee rate is is there in the in the open market. But at the same time, fair trade that helped the farmers a lot. I'm happy to say that because the uh, existing system or existing rate shall not affect the coffee growers who are registered with the fair trade. By seeing the benefit of this coffee as well as the fair trade, the number of farmers are increasing. You know that around after passing uh, around 20 years, uh, then around uh, the number from four, 400 to uh, 20,000 is that kind of an increase is there. Altogether, we have there's two cooperatives working together. One is WFR, WSS Organic Farmers Federal Association, around, uh, it's in the 
southern southern part of uh, Vainar district, and then the northern part of Vainar six is Kerala Agro Foundation for Fair Trade Enhancement. Another another cooperative, but uh, Biovin is the is the what uh, the trader and giving giving uh, promoting uh, uh, pro promotions and so on. So both these cooperative altogether there are twenty thousand farmers, and out of them around ninety. Uh, 9,000 farmers are uh, organic certified farmers. So more number of farmers are showing their interest to join with patented system. Yes. Peter, well, shall it, we move on to opening up to yes, the floor now? Yes, I was just going to, to do that and say that um, thank you for joining us uh, from me. And it isn't all bad news. Um, though the fact that our coffee and tea and spices are going to become more expensive for reasons completely out of your control um, is perhaps something we've got to get over to um, consumers and get over the reason and the people who are behind that issue. So from me, thank you very much. And Graham, will throw it open to the floor, as they say. Um, before we open up to the floor, um, I want to go to Ailsa, really. Um, and before you start to read out questions, Elsa, I understand that Oscar's doing a school project on um, fair trade. And I wonder if he wanted to ask the first question. Well, he's a little shy this morning, Graham. He is that <laughs> trying his best to stay off camera. But he has learned some really amazing facts about the benefits of fair trade this week. And one of those facts that he's learned is that fair trade doesn't just support the farmers but it also supports the farmers communities and the families that live in those areas so he was interested to see how fair trade supports children um, what kind of questions have we got here sir so um looking down so far we've got some questions from deb about um are the farmers having to develop and grow new products due to the effects of climate change um and is there government support if farmers have a poor harvest or are they reliant on the market only uh, actually the farmers are not uh, sorry the farmers are not getting proper support from the government system in order to in order to uh, mitigate the loss. So instead, instead when there is a, an, an issue, government is there to support with uh, or ensuring that they are not, uh, they are not uh, hunger. That means they are supporting them by giving food kits. You know that po by population wise also, Kerala in a small region there is you know, huge number of people are uh, inhabiting, and uh, around uh, many are uh, middle class people. So middle class people are the are the victims, I think, because they even not go out to say that we are in trouble. Instead, they will try to uh, somehow uh, hide it. But the poor people, literally poor marginalized people, their uh, issues are being easily addressed. They are people are there. So uh, actually, uh, organizations like ours are there to check with family to family. And we have a, a well group system there, and that also try to understand what is what is lacking in that particular region or local area. So that message is shared to us. So we are uh, supporting them in this uh, in this issue or in the in the COVID and as well as the uh, adverse climatic uh, season by ensuring that uh, farmers as well as the poor people are not in hunger situation. Sure. Yes, hi. Um, I, I, what I was just curious about really was um, obviously we we look at fair trade from a UK point of view in terms of what we're importing. Um, but my, I was just curious in terms of how, um, what kind of support from um, worldwide exports does 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 do you get in terms of from other countries and their support to the fair trade itself? What, what kind of uh, supports is out there? So the whole global community through fair trade is really supporting the farmers by uh, procuring their material, purchasing their material. So I know that uh, quality wise fair trade is it's a social system. It's not belong to the quality of the material. 
So it's a concept. So the the European community as well as the US community, US also the number of um, number of people who are preferring fair trade is increasing. So the global community is always trying to support the people in the in the marginalized or in the in the uh, third world uh, region. So that in such a way, fair trade linking the people together. I think is that the yeah. Hello. Yes. Um, this is a question from Kathy Jackson, who's had to leave the meeting, but she's asked me to ask it anyway, and it's to the co-op, um, which is, is there a reason why the cocoa in products aren't marked as fair trade? Because as a local campaigner, it's it's quite important to kind of have the mark on things. You tell people to look for the mark. So it's very complicated then when you say, well, it's OK if it's in co-op because it is fair trade, but it's not OK somewhere else. So I was wondering if um, you could answer that for Kathy. To be honest, Aileen, I, I really don't have a specific answer. And I know we did a, um, a session yesterday evening and that was something that came up about um, better kind of labelling of products. And, and you're right, there's a, there's a lot of products that are co-op, there's chocolate in them. We know that chocolate is fair trade, but the, the Joe public um, looking at it wouldn't necessarily know because it doesn't have that logo. So it is something that we've put in the pot um, to take back. Um, so we, we will definitely add that as, as a question, Aileen, and um, if we can get an answer, we'll come back out to you. If there are any other questions in the chat box or if anybody wants to email me questions, I'll make sure that they're passed on to Father John and hopefully he'll, he'll answer those questions in the fullness of time. So really we're moving towards the end of the session and thank you for your time and patience again. Um, so we, we end really by saying how can we we collectively support fair trade and I guess and Aileen will uh, talk about this in a little bit more detail in a second. We can buy fair trade when we go into the stores. We can spread the word by telling our friends and families to choose fair trade and it's Mother's Day coming up soon so um, why not buy our mothers, um, those of us who've got mothers left, um, a fair trade bar of chocolate and fair trade flowers. Obviously, we can visit fair trade web pages to learn more about fair trade and hear from our producers um, and visit our fair trade marks web page to understand the difference between fair trade marks. Whatever you do, though, as I think today's session has shown, will make a genuine difference. Um, my slides aren't moving on, but um, Aileen, do you want to come in at this point and um, um, explain what you think, the ways that we could help out now, um, that we can all make a difference. Hi, yeah, of course. Um, so thank you very much for inviting me. I'm Aileen Burmeister. I'm the National Coordinator for Fairtrade Wales. Um, we uh, work with over 30 community groups in Wales and we help coordinate Fairtrade Fortnight in Wales. We actually had Father John come to Wales in 2018 in the biggest amount of snow I think I've seen in my life. Um, so all hats up. Uh, I'll try and keep it brief because we have run over time. So um, I was asked to talk a little bit about ways that people can engage with schools and so some of you are very experienced with this. Um, but the two top tips I have for engaging with schools on fair trade is number one, find the right person. Um, a school has got a lot of different staff members in it and very often there'll be one person who will be able to really push forward, who'll be really passionate about fair trade and once you've found that person there's an awful lot that you can do in an awful lot of subjects such as art and maths and business and all of these sorts of things. Um, the second top tip really for working with schools is to connect with your local fair trade group or with the fair trade team in your local authority very often um, there are teams in local authorities that work on this. I know in Monmouthshire and in Carmarthenshire, there are people that specifically work with schools and fair trade. And then there are local fair trade groups across the UK. If you're interested in a group in Wales, you can get in touch with us and we can connect you. If you're in England, you can get in touch with the Fair Trade Foundation and they'll be able to connect you with your local group. Um, I'm gonna cut the schools bit short there. Um, I think in general we often talk about changing the world and making a difference as if it's somehow different to what we do every day and I think the fact is if you're alive you're changing the world you're making a difference you're you're impacting 
the things around you every day and what you do. And it can be really difficult to remember that picking up this packet of tea instead of that packet of tea when they're right next to each other in the supermarket makes makes that difference and is that change that you're trying to make but the the theme of fortnight this year alongside the climate is is choosing the world you want choosing the the place we want to live and the community and i think so many people here as part of the co-op are very important in part of that um, it is saint david's day on monday and saint david is very famous for saying which means do the little things and it's those little things and those little drops which often make make the bigger difference in what's going on. Um, it's a huge task to try and change the global economy, <laughs> but um, that the co-op has has long been at the forefront of this and showing an alternative way that we can trade um, productively together to benefit everyone. Um, and yeah, so I think I'll leave it there. Thank you for inviting me. It's been really interesting. Um, and yeah, we are at Fair Trade Wales. Um, we have a website and Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. That's the word. <laughs> <laughs> All of them. <laughs> so yeah, uh, thank you. Fair Trade Wales with Camry Matatig. That's brilliant. Thank you. Um, a reminder about next week's event. If you've not seen the adverts for it, we've got Mike Gidney, who's the Chief Executive Officer for Fair, the Fair Trade Foundation giving us a talk next Thursday, March the 4th, on climate justice. So if you've not already had an invite and you'd like one, just drop me an email and I will send you the link for, for that. Um, all that's left for me to say now is thank you for attending. We've gone a little over time, but it was a really fascinating meeting. Um, Father John, really informative. Thank you very much. That's it. So uh, thank you and thank you for bearing with my technical inabilities and I will see you again soon. Thank you. Bye for now.